Welcome to the last section of this course. This section is called some advanced topics you need to know about. And in this section, I will show you some programming constructors and tools that I have not yet explained to you. I will start by presenting to you the array list and the for each loop. As you have seen up until now, I built all the examples on top of previous ones, and this is not an exception. Here I'm reusing the employee class we saw in a previous lecture, and in this example I'm basically creating an array of employees. In this case, this array is called employee array, and it has three slots. I'm initializing that array using a for loop. The for loop starts at 0, it ends when the counter is equal to 3, and in each iteration I'm adding 1 to the counter. And here you can see how to use a for loop appropriately. I'm using the counter to access each element in the array, and I'm initializing it with a new employee. I'm using the counter yet again to differentiate each employee. When the counter is 0, the name of that employee is employee number and then the number of the counter. All of the employees are males and all of the employees have an ID of 1. So, as you can see, a for loop is very practical to initialize arrays. And what about reading elements of an array? Well, for that we have the for each loop. This is a new kind of loop I want to show you now. We declare the for each loop specifying the keyword for. The difference is that in the for each loop we specify a placeholder variable, then a colon, and finally the name of the array we want to go through. In this case the array is an array of employees, so the placeholder variable must be of the employee type. What this for loop does is taking this array and it goes from position to position, in this case it has only three positions, but it goes from 0 to 2 in this case, and then in each iteration we can use the placeholder variable and do something with it. In this case, if I click on the run button, we see that it prints each of the values contained in that array. Because I'm using system out print line e, which is the name of the placeholder variable, and then to string. Remember that the toString method is a method that I created in the person class. The person class specifies the toString method. And remember that I can use this method on the employee class because the employee class extends person and so it inherits that same method to string. And that is what we see here. Now, using normal arrays has a big problem, and that is, if I change this tree for a 4, it will create 4 objects, but this only has 3 slots, so what will happen now if I click on the run button? I see an exception, and this is the array index out of bounds exception. If you are not careful with arrays, you will see this exception a lot. Of course, having a program that can only store 3 employees is not very useful, and if I want to change the number of employees of a division, for example, and I have to change this right here for 20, I set 20 slots. What if I don't need all of those? Arrays have the big problem of having a set number of slots. Now I will show you the array list. The array list is this right here. Notice that to use this I need to import the array list class. And now you see something new. What are these right here? What is this? Well, this is called a generic type. And you won't see many classes that use this kind of stuff. This means that I can adapt the usage of array list to any class I want. If I want to store employees, I need to specify the class employee inside of these diamonds. And that's what they are called. This right here and this right here. You see that this is the declaration 
of an array list. Here you see a type, array list and employee inside because this is a this is an array list of employees. An array list is kind of an array, but it has more flexibility. This is the name of that array list of this object, and then I initialize it using the new array list employee inside constructor method. Now I'm going to write the same exact array but using array list. Well, first I will change this to 3 again and this to 3. Array list is an object, so it's not like an array. An array is a special kind of construct. To manipulate an array list, I need to use methods. In this case, the method to add something to the array list is the method add. And what do I add? Well, I add an employee. If I copy this, I can pass it as a parameter and semicolon at the end, of course. And here you can see the difference between the normal array and the array list. In the array list, you don't specify a set number of slots. You add them as you need them, and it can expand as much as you like. It does not have a set number of slots. Now, how do I extract all the employees inside the array list? Well, that's pretty simple. I just copy the for loop. I pass to it the array list, and I'm done. That's it. If I click on the wrong button, you see that first it prints the employees of the normal array and then it prints those of the array list. As I said before, one of the advantages of the array list is that it will not throw an array out of bounds exception. If I add 20 employees and then I save and then I click on the wrong button, I see array out of bounds exception. But what if I don't pass the first array and then I command this right here. OK, now I will click on the wrong button and you see that it does not throw an exception because the array list will grow as much as we like it to grow. Another common way to extract the values of an array and an array list is this right here using a normal for loop. Here you can see that I'm using the employee array dot length method to know how much iterations this loop has to do to extract all the values. And then I'm using the counter to access each slot of the array and I'm using this to print the to string method. In this case it will do it 20 times because the length of the array is 20 as you can see here and it will stop just before it throws the array out of bounds exception. It will go from 0 to 19 and then it will jump to the other for loop to do the same thing on the array list. The array list does not have the length method, it has the size method and I'm using the same technique to extract all the values from this array list. To get a value of an array list, you must use the get method and then pass to it an int and that int will return to you the employee which is in that index of the array list. Now because this method returns an employee and that is all of this code is equal to an employee, I can call on top of it the toString method. And this is called method chaining because I'm calling methods on top of other methods. And I can promise you that if you practice a lot, you will get used to it. Now let's review some of that array list awesomeness. First, you don't have to specify the array size, which is awesome. And then you use the add method to add as many elements as you like. You use the size method instead of the length to count the number of elements and then you get the elements inside the array by calling the get method on the array list instead of using the square bracket syntax. And that's it. If you have any questions, you can send them to me. Practice a lot and see you in the next lecture.